and everything that had praise. Praise ye the Lord. Give our, uh, give our young people a hand this morning. Amen. <laughs> we got, I had our, uh, I think I'm saying it wrong, I'm going to say it again, recitations. I don't think that's right, but we had our recitals. Is that better? Our recitation. Thank you, Shannon. Our recitations. Our recitals and then our own sister T blessing us in this inspirational selection. And we thank the Lord that you would come today and still give reverence. I know you opened all your gifts on yesterday, but some of you still got gifts coming. I know you do. Uh, but we thank God today for being able to come and to share on this of uh, the Lord's day. And we certainly give God the praise for everyone that are taking time out of your schedule to share with us on today. And certainly we thank God for our own trustee Mark Thomas came today. Give him a hand, Reverend Thomas, brother. And I look, and I went to the car. <laughs> I went to the car and saw Miss Boone. I thought Boots was sitting beside. I almost fell on the ground, man. <laughs> Looked like him. <laughs> but it's good to have you here. Good to have you, brother Mark, to have come and share with us. And your mother is doing such a great job. And then she's added a granddaughter to our staff. And we full of Booms and Thomases and, and 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 what's her last name? What is her last name? Granger. And Grangers. Okay. Uh, on our staff. So we thank God uh, for that. And they are doing such a beautiful job uh, keeping us rolling in our music department. And we just thank God for you, all of you here today. We're not going to long your time today. We know some of you are ready to go home and, and eat the rest of your Christmas dinner and to open those packages you didn't open them yesterday. But before you open those packages today, there is a word from the Lord that we want to give you uh, on this occasion. There is a word from the Lord. Isaiah chapter 9 is the text of scripture. Verses 7, uh, 6 and 7 are the verses. For they read uh, as such. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. The mighty God the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of great David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. I want to talk today in what time we have left on the subject, the Prince of Peace still lives today. The Prince of Peace still lives today. And we certainly want to thank God for our young men today that have been singing. Give these young men a hand. They, they, could, be, they could be on the street on crack cocaine or something. I don't know, but they're here today at the church. And I thank God. And ain't none of them been to jail. Ain't none of them been in trouble that I know of. But they would have got a whipping by my belt. Amen. But we thank God today for these young men that are sharing with us. Uh, the Prince of Peace still lives today. Dear God, we ask you to bless us as we come to uh, preach uh, the word that the Holy Spirit has given us direction to preach. We pray, our God, that you will lure us down into the deepest treasures of your eternal love and bless us to come forth with the message that you have for the people of God. Hear, O oh God, this your servant, and bless us in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. The Prince of Peace still lives today. We thank our God in heaven today for allowing us to be able to come together uh, on this day after our Christmas Day celebrations of all types. To be able to come together as a Christian congregation and to share in worship around the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our divine and eternal Savior. We come together today to give recognition to and to give God the Father the glory for sending his son, Jesus Christ, down through 42 generations 
that we might have a right to the tree of life through Christ Jesus, who is the Savior of the world. It is because of this fact that we are eternally grateful to God for all he has done to position us spiritually that we might receive the gift of salvation through faith alone in Jesus Christ's finished work on the cross at Calvary. You see, the Protestant church fathers of the Reformation age called this divine act of, of God, they called it sola fide, or which simply means justification by faith alone plus nothing else. Uh-huh. Uh, thus, this uh, biblical uh, gospel principle allows Jesus rightfully to be savior of the world to all mankind that will accept his uh, sacrifice to mankind, for all that will accept his atonement, for all that will accept his propitiation of his blood, offered to God the Father on behalf of all sinful mankind. You see, no work or no act by mankind can save us, but it is by God's grace through faith that we are saved and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 89. Consequently, today we celebrate the birth of the Savior of the world. And we celebrate that birth with great joy in our hearts, with great adoration and adulation in our spirits. And with the great precious assurance of heart, mind, and spirit that the Prince of Peace still lives today. We are grateful, yes we are, to God the Father also for all the biblical scriptures that we have heard our young people recite today. And all the biblical narratives that have been presented to us this morning with the Holy Spirit's power and with his illumination. We thank God for all the singing of our male chorus with songs of joy and our praise for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. Thusly, with all, with all that our eyes have seen today and with all that our ears have heard today, we have been able to come to the grand conclusion today that Jesus Christ was born into this world. Uh-huh, he was born into this world uh, to change the ways and the wicked condition that the world now existed. We've heard today various readings of Old Testament scripture. Uh-huh, 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 that has made it crystal clear that the birth of Jesus Christ of Nazareth was foretold hundreds of years earlier uh, through the Old Testament prophets. Church, 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 the road of his entrance into this old earthly sphere of being, my friends, was paid by God the Father in heaven many eons ago in the eternity past. In the Bible, in the book of Hebrews, the writer writes in chapter 10, verse number 5, it says, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou would have not, but a body thou hast prepared me. Church, Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, uh-huh, as I stated earlier, came down through 42 generations to take his place on the earthly stage as a baby, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a, a dirty, filthy horse call, stall called a manger. He didn't come in through the king's palace, but he came in through the stall and through the dirty filthiness of lowness uh, to show the world uh, that he is, can lift you up from the bottom and bring you up to the top if you just trust in him. Stay with me today. Church, listen to God's holy and inerrant word as recorded 
in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. Bear with me today. Uh, Dr. Luke uh, records in the Holy Writ uh, these God-breathed words of factual historic record. He says, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Uh-huh. And the angel said unto them, watch this, he said, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Watch this, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, which is called Christ the Lord. Don't, 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 don't stop there. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Watch this. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Church, on that warm night, the angel of the Lord and a multitude of the heavenly hosts, that is thousands upon thousands of angels, glorified God together. Church, who were they glorifying? They were glorifying the greatest king to ever to be born in this world. And his name is Christ of the Lord. Some may ask uh, the question, Pastor Freeman, uh, how can you make such a solid and objective conclusion of the whole matter? Well, this is because I have uh, someone in the Old Testament to back me up. And his name was called Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet. He was the son of Amos, the great prophet. He was a prophet of both Judea and Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And he prophesied about this same great earthly event some 745 years earlier, uh -huh. before Emmanuel's uh, birth. You see, in the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter number nine, the prophet Isaiah told the people, he said, the people that walked in darkness they that now have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death. He says, upon them have the light shined. Aha, uh -huh. you see Isaiah 9 and 2, uh, he spoke those words. See, the Old Testament prophet of God spoke to these Jewish people of God through the prophetic, prophetic voice of Jehovah God in heaven. And in verses number six and number seven, we get the meat of our text, uh, where uh, God's holy scripture uh, uh, makes full proof of what happened in uh, Bethlehem. You see, these famous and forever glorious words are as such. Uh, the, the prophet said, for unto us a child is born, <laughs> unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name, watch these names. His name shall be called Wonderful. What else is going to be called? Counselor. He said, I got some more names for him. His name is the Mighty God. But they, you talking about Jesus. Yes, we are. We talk about the, the prophetic Messiah, the everlasting Father. He is, don't miss this, he is the Prince of Peace. <laughs> he is the Prince of peace. You see, when the world can't find any peace, the Prince of Peace is right among us. And his name is Jesus Christ. And all we got to do is call on his name and he will bring about the peace that needed uh, to help us to survive in a time such as this. And then the prophet Isaiah said, I want to give you some more prophecy. He said of the increase of his government. Watch this. And peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it 
and establish it, watch this, with judgment and with justice from henceforth evermore. He said, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You see, my friends, my friends, understand today that, that there's coming a time when Christ Jesus is coming in a futuristic picture. I, and we haven't seen yet what we're about to see when Christ comes back. And when he comes back and sets up his 1,000 year millennial reign, when he is uh, the king that sits on the throne, and the governors and the presidents and the lawyers and the doctors will fall down and worship the king of kings. See, I'm trying to get y'all to understand something today. Jesus Christ is Lord. And we got to act just like he's our Lord. You see, my Christian brothers and my Christian sisters, the greatest king ever to be born is named Jesus. And he is the Prince of Peace. And guess what? He's still alive and sitting on his heavenly throne. Uh-huh. But, but watch this. God the Father made a way for us to be able to get our salvation because he made Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. He, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't make him per se, but, but he allowed Jesus Christ to be born as a little baby. He took on humanity. But yet, he didn't give up his deity. Y'all watch what I'm saying. He was fully God, yet he was still fully man. He was God, and he poured out his self. He said, he, said, he, said he, he didn't find it robbery to be equal with God, but he fashioned himself like a man. Someone said he, that he had, a, he had a process called the kenosis, where he poured out his self. Uh -huh, and gave himself for mankind that none of us ought be lost except we do it on our own. All right. See, here was a baby born in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes, yet he was still the prophesied Messiah, still the king of Israel, and he will be king of kings and lord of lords when he come back again to reign on the throne of David. Y'all remember David? Uh-huh, the man that uh, 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 messed around with Bathsheba. You remember David? The man that killed Goliath. Y'all don't know the story. You remember David? Y'all don't help me. The man that took on Saul, but he still didn't hurt him. You remember David? David was the king of Israel, but there is a perpetual kingdom which Jesus Christ is going to take the throne. And when he take the throne, it's going to be forever. And forever. Look at this. Look at this. So if you don't want to bow to him right now, get ready. Get your knees ready because you're going to bow for him after a while. Isn't that right? So you might, you might laugh at him right now. But when he crack the sky and come take his throne, you will fall on your feet. Because every eye shall see him. Good God Almighty. And he's coming back again to reign on the throne of David in the city of Jerusalem on the great hill called Mount Zion. Y'all ought to be glad y'all got a nice name there, Mount Zion. <laughs> Mount Zion was a holy place on the hill in Jerusalem. See, Jesus was born. Jesus died. And Jesus was buried. But early on the third day morning, one Sunday morning, over 2,000 years ago, the Father in heaven raised Jesus Christ up out the grave. And because he got up out the grave, he has all power. Tell, tell somebody all power. He got all power in his hand. You think because you get a little bit of power, you are something. You got some money, you're something. You've been educated at the best schools, you're something. But in the sight of God, you are nothing. Nothing compared to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. See, he was seen of Cephas. Then the twelve. After that, he was seen of about 500 brethren at once. Church, he was seen for 40 days, walking on earth. He went up to the Mount called Olivet, where he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of the sight of the disciples. Then the Apostle John, on the Isle of Patmos, wrote these holy, inspired words. He said, and I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse 
and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Watch this. And in righteousness, he did judge and make war. See, when he's coming back, he ain't coming back as a little baby, but he's coming back as a warrior, <laughs> as the king with a sword in his mouth, cutting sin on the left and cutting sin on the right and cutting out everything that ain't righteous. Then he John wrote in conclusion these words. He said he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, and the name is called King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh-huh, church. I want you to understand today that the Prince of Peace still lives today. And his name is called Christ Jesus. One songwriter said he is King of Kings and he is Lord of Lords. Jesus Christ, first and last. Nobody works like him. He is the Prince of Peace. But I want you to understand something today, uh, that he still lives. He's still living to save folk who want to come to the cross uh, and, I, 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 and be dipped in the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, see, his name is Jesus Christ. <laughs> but his name is also Emmanuel. The Bible says his name, watch this, shall be called Wonderful. His name is called Counselor. Now the Bible says he is the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and he still lives today. Listen to me, he's not your cut buddy, and he's not the man upstairs. He's not your drinking partner. He's not your butler that you can send where you want to send. And I think he's going to serve you hand and foot. He's not your cousin from another mother. He is God, and he is Prince of Peace. He's the savior of the world. He is king of kings. He is lord of lords. The Bible says, Wherefore, God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Watch this. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. <laughs> you see, soon and very soon, we're going to see the King of Kings. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the Lord of Lord. <laughs> oh my God, somebody have to say yeah. If you love the Lord, say yeah. If God's been good to you, blow your horn. Praise worthy of the King of Kings. Give God some glory for another Christmas season. You see, if I don't see you again until next year, I want you to have a happy and a prosperous new year. Let's make 2022 a better year with the help of the Lord. We're going to keep our hand in God's hand. And no matter what come or go, we're going to keep trusting in the Lord. And don't you ever forget that the Prince of Peace is still living today and he is King of Kings. And yes, he is. He's Lord of Lords. Somebody say praise the Lord this morning. Come on, somebody say praise the Lord. Prince of Peace still lives today. He is King. He is Lord. Nothing to be played with. He's a Savior. He is. The one that came to save mankind from all his or her sins. Maybe there's someone today who needs the only Savior that can save you from a life of sin and of misery. See, there is a Prince of Peace named Jesus Christ who can bring salvation and give you the peace of God that will soothe your troubled heart and your troubled mind. I want you just pray these words with me. Those online, those Facebook Live, I want you just pray with me if you don't know who this man is and ask him into your heart today. Just say, just say, dear God in heaven. Come on, just say it. Just say, say, dear God in heaven, I know that I am a sinner far from you. Tell God, tell him, say, God, I confess my sins today and I repent of all my sins and transgressions that I've committed against you and against heaven. Tell God I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, 
And I believe my heart, God, that you raised Jesus from the dead. Now I know without a doubt that I am saved. I am saved. I am saved. Somebody give God some praise for salvation of the sinner. If you prayed that prayer with me today, then you are brand new, born again, believe in Christ Jesus. And you also are a new child of God's eternal kingdom. Yes, you are. Why don't you start doing something? Start reading your Bible. Just start the New Testament. Start reading the word of God. Start praying to God on a daily basis in Jesus' name and the power of the Holy Spirit. And then pray and ask God to lead you to a Christian Bible believing, Bible teaching church where you can be disciple in the ways of Jesus Christ and join in Christian fellowship with a group of fellow baptized believers in Christ Jesus. God bless you. Have a happy, prosperous, holy new year in Jesus Christ. We say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. The doors of the church are now open.